with me. I'm doing a video on some pretty interesting captives. They're Phidippus X, the bull jumping spider. Now these are some of the most intelligent arachnids. They are only 10 millimeters long, but by the name jumping spiders, they do jump. I'm going to I'm gonna explain here what I know about keeping them, and just maybe if we're lucky we can see one attack its prey. Now, this is an immature Phidippus addict bull jumping spider, at least I think it's that species. Could be wrong, but I know I have the genus correct because of the white spot on its abdomen and the greenish flattened scales and hairs on its shelter. Now these guys, jumping spiders, have very interesting mating rituals. They are very intelligent and they sometimes offer the food to females. They wave their pedipalps around. Uh, one of the coolest flights I've seen them with smaller species. But these juveniles, I keep them in a about two liter plastic kind of like Tupperware container. I use the very useful box brand. Uh, if they're a very useful box, um, they have open. They their lids are tightly fitting. But they have spaces that let ventilation come through, which is very important because these guys can't tolerate very high humidity. Now, unlike most spiders, these guys relish the sun. Um, they just love being in the bright areas. They have color vision, which, and pretty much 360 vision. That's why, that's because when they hunt, they will jump on their prey over long distances. They are very good jumpers and quite good escape artists. Um, just wondering now, as you see they have this weird jerky insect like mu movement and most people who don't even like spiders would probably will say these find some cuteness in these. And uh, My smallest one who I, I'm hoping is a male, he has a cricket, he slash she, right there, he's just leaving the cricket. And what's left is a dried out shell of a cricket because they basically drink their insides. Here are my other two. Um, they, they've eaten yesterday, I don't think we can eat today. But you, at this stage in the development, I feed them quarter inch crickets. That's probably the biggest they'll be able to get to eat. When they're babies, like really little babies, that's just after hatching, um, the best idea is to feed them Pinheads come eighth inch crickets because they're so small and they can't take much bigger prey than that. Um, so you don't really need to give them water because that'll just raise the humidity. These guys can stand temperatures of up to 90 degrees Fahrenheit, but after that, um, not a good idea. Get them out of the sun real quick or else they'll die. Um, as for breeding, I don't know much about those yet, but I'm hoping to find out. The males have very intricate courtship rituals, like I've mentioned. Mm -hmm. So these guys are going to have to get bigger homes. Like, I will have to get a bigger, very useful box for them. But you can buy those at Staples. Uh, like I said, they have some good ventilation. The, the surface they can climb on, which is pretty important, because they'll feel pretty stressed out if they can't. I have one that's lost life and it's going basically insane, an adult. Um, these will have probably a couple molts to go before they reach their fully adult size. And yeah, I'm planning to maybe set up a business selling them. They are, they're small but they're relatively hard to take care of. You don't really have to worry about them dropping like tarantulas because they can survive quite long drops. Um, for their size, but yeah, normally they have a drag line attached. Mm -hmm. They're pretty cool pets. Uh, I found these ones at farms in the fall. They've been overwintering in my back room where it's cool, and I've just brought them out and they've been eating. So yeah, crickets do. You could probably offer them house flies. Um, cultured house flies, fruit flies for babies, definitely wingless fruit flies. That'd be aw that'd be awesome. Don't really need much cage decorations, but don't really need much naturalistic. I haven't found any problems with it, but 
it does kind of complicate it and I just find simple setups is better for these guys. Well, I hope you like my introduction to Philippus Addicts, the bull jump spider, and I'll keep you informed about their development. And hopefully I can get some video of them eating, which I don't know, maybe I can, but it's kind of unpredictable when they do. Because I've never seen it myself, except for some older specimens I had late, last summer. So, I'll keep you posted on the development, and if they breed, I will definitely tell you about that. Okay, see you later.